the periodic table is set up in such a way uh, that there is an easy way to determine the number of valence electrons an atom has. Um, if you look at the top of a group, you will notice that there is a Roman numeral. The Roman numeral will correspond to the number of valence electrons in that group, as long as you're talking about one of the eight, excuse me, one of the eight representative groups, which is going to be groups one and two, 13 through 18. So group one have one, you know, for an example, like hydrogen, 1s1, only one valence electron. Lithium, 1s2, 2s1, one valence electron. Sodium, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1, one valence. All these have one valence. Uh, the second group have two. Group 13 has three. Group 14 has four. 15 have five. 16 have six, 17 have seven, and then group 18 has eight. Notice we skipped the inner transitions, groups three through 12. They generally have two valence electrons, sometimes they have one. Uh, they have various oxidation states, but uh, general rule, they usually have two, some of them have one, but the other ones, the representative groups, are just the Roman numeral above them. I am Dmitry Mendeleev. Periodic table of the elements. I am your father. Mendeleev's first periodic table was arranged in order of increasing atomic mass. And for the most part, if you look at our modern periodic table, it's very similar. Uh, there are a few exceptions. Um, if you look at the masses of, uh, say, argon and potassium, Argon is more massive than potassium, but it appears before it. Uh, likewise, there is another kind of instance, uh, another example would be cobalt and nickel, where it's not arranged in order of increasing atomic mass. Uh, the one thing that Mendeleev was able to do, however, with his periodic table, is that he was able to leave spaces for elements that had not been discovered yet. Um, one example, in germanium, he left a space for germanium even though it wasn't known he knew that arsenic did not have properties like the other elements in the carbon family um, he was able to kind of predict the properties of the unknown element and he was able to predict its atomic mass the periodic table as you see it today is arranged due to increasing atomic number so it's the number of protons that are in the nucleus of the atom Out of the following sets of elements, the one that has similar uh, physical and chemical properties, the best answer is going to be B, strontium, magnesium, calcium, and beryllium. How do you know? Those are all elements of the second group. They're strontium, magnesium, calcium, and beryllium. So they are all members of the alkaline earth metal group, or sometimes they're referred to as families. Just like uh, people in a family will often have similar characteristics or traits, elements in the same vertical column are referred to as groups or sometimes families because of their similar properties. The important part to remember about metal, nonmetal, and metalloid, uh, the first thing you really need to do is identify where that stair step is. Uh, the stair step is going to occur right here on your periodic table. Um, everything that is located to the left of the stair step is a metal, with the exception of hydrogen. Hydrogen is kind of a goofball. A lot of times periodic tables will have it off kind of by itself. But everything to the left of that stair step is a metal. Uh, everything that is found to the right is a non-metal. And then these few elements that occur like right on the stair step, so the ones that are sitting right on the stairs and uh, these that are directly underneath the stairs, boron, silicon, germanium, arsenic, antimony, tellurium, and polonium, those are referred to as metalloids. They're elements that have properties of both metals and nonmetals. So looking at the list, cobalt, the first one, here's cobalt, 
It's on the left side, definitely. It is a metal. Uh, for B, we have silicon. Silicon is sitting right on the stairs. It is a metalloid. Phosphorus. Phosphorus symbol P, found right there. Non-metal. Potassium. Potassium is located right there. Definitely a metal. And then hydrogen. Once again, I mentioned this. Um, hydrogen is the only element found to the left of the stair step that is non-metallic. So hydrogen is not a metal, even though it's found on the left. As far as properties for um, uh, metallic and non-metallic elements, um, a gas at room temperature that is generally indicative of a non-metal. You'll notice that uh, elements in group 18 and even the majority of them in 17 on your periodic table, they are outlined in red. Red indicates that they are a gas at room temperature. Um, if you look at uh, letter B, one to three valence electrons in its outermost energy level. Um, anytime you have very few valence, that is indicative of a metal. So, uh, like the alkali metals, alkaline earth metals, all those the transition metals tend to have between one to three. C, malleability. Malleability means it's the ability to bend it or pound it into thin sheets. That is indicative of a metal. A poor conductor of electric current, or coincidentally heat, those are properties of nonmetals, because metals are very good conductors of both heat and electricity. Uh, dull luster. Luster is a scientific term for shininess. Metals are generally very lustrous, very shiny. So this is dull luster. That would be a non-metal. And then finally, gain valence electrons to form an anion. So if you're gaining electrons, that means that you are really close to your octet, very close to having eight valence, to having your perfect collection. Uh, the elements that are very close to having their octet, that are apt to gain electrons and become an anion, a negative ion, those would be the non-metallic elements.